is another in my series of spotlights on a particular species of animal with art tips for that animal as well as scientific information. For this project, I flip-flopped back and forth between working just on the skeletal and making corrections and working on the musculature on a layer above using different opacities to see through and figure out what I'm doing. That is because I had a bit of trouble making the anatomy quite as accurate as it could have been, but that's fine. If you find a method that helps you get things more correct, you should use that method. Deers have bony, blade-like ridges on their spines, as well as thick neck bones with special places for muscles to attach. They have very thick muscular necks and backs, and because of this ridge, are actually much more uncomfortable to ride than something with a much flatter back like a horse. Their cloven hooves are flexible and adjust to different terrains very well when they're running. Only the males have the antlers, which they grow just in the breeding season and shed. Here I'm figuring out the actual inking for the skeleton, working over and with the structures as well as looking at my reference. This is done on a separate layer on top of the other layers. And as you can see, I made the muscles layer completely see-through so that it wouldn't get in my way, but I could still kind of see where the muscle was, just because I thought it looked neat. Another thing to keep in mind about the shapes of the body is that the rear legs are very muscular, but they're actually very flat in three-dimensional space as well as the very far end of the rump makes more of a triangular shape pointing backwards, rather than a very rounded shape like the rear end of a horse or a human. On the rear legs, there's also a gap between the strands of muscles that is only covered over by skin and fur. This is also present on dogs. Despite the bony ridges, you can still make a mythical mount version of a deer if you wish, but keep in mind that a special saddle should be designed and it would be very, very odd for anyone to try to ride a deer bareback. It would still be possible, but that ridge would cut right into whoever was sitting on its back. Red deers have a very large range. They live in areas of southern North America, parts of northern Africa, throughout Central Asia, and some introduced populations in Australia, New Zealand, and Argentina. I'm making corrections to the eyes and beginning to block in the flesh skin fur layer. I'm doing some base coating of the soft radiant shading and a couple of the other colors. Now I'm going in on a layer on top and doing a line art version of the creature so that I can save a line art separately. As in many other mammals, the core of the actual tail underneath where the muscles are is much smaller than the large poof of fur which surrounds it. Males in breeding season often have a larger mane than this. Red deer can grow very large poofy manes around their neck for display, but as subspecies vary, some individuals don't have as visible of a mane. I drew one with a very small mane here, though many may have larger manes. Do your own research and look at various references to decide which one you're drawing. As well as remember, the female will not have a mane, nor will she have antlers. Here I corrected the eyes. I'd actually made them a bit too big and not quite far enough apart. Now here I'm working on a couple of fawns. Baby deer are also called fawns. All deer have fairly large ears proportionately, in my opinion, but the fawns have very, very large ears proportionately. They'll also look far less muscular and they'll have thicker bottoms to their legs, but thinner tops. Overall, they'll have larger eyes proportionately and look much cuter. Make sure to look at various references to help you on this. I decided to do color line art for this one early on, and I also completed the line art before I moved in to do the colors. I'm layering the colors here with various paintbrush opacity and colors. I also color picked from a reference photo. There was actually a bit of purple in there, which is a bit surprising. Sometimes you need to look closer to notice what colors are actually in a thing. A bit of a dark olive grayish green in areas, as well as a tiny bit of a bluish tone sometimes shows up. This second fawn is a very adorable public domain image I found and decided I had to paint it more precisely to the image. Male red deers that are in adults may have up to 16 points in their antlers. Don't show any sign of antlers if you're drawing a female or a baby deer. The red deer is one of the nine species of true deer in the Cervidae family. The fawns of this species have very obvious white spotting and are often very, very reddish in tone, but they can also be more of a yellowish brown in tone, like this one I'm painting now. It's also worth noting that Bambi from the famous Disney movie was a red deer. The female is called a doe or hind. Outside of the breeding season, 
Females and young live into herds as strong as a thousand members, whereas the males only live individually or in bachelor herds. They eat grasses, twigs, fungi, bark, and leaves and shoots, and they tend to have a lifespan of 12 to 15 years. Well, that's all about red deer for now. I hope you look forward to future videos. There'll be more in this spotlight series on various species of animals. Some things on characters and fantasy worlds, art challenges, and many more different types of videos. I hope you look forward to seeing the new opening animation I'll be eventually doing. So that's all for now. See you next time. Bye!